Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Jaded, and today we're taking a first look at Smite. Now, for those who don't know what the game is all about, or maybe have never even played a MOBA ever, uh, I'm going to be going over some of the basic rules just really fast to get you an understanding about what this game is all about. And ultimately, this first look is to give you guys an impression on the game. Um, you know, I've played this for about five hours now, just enough to buy one of the gods. Um, so that can kind of give you a reference how much I've played. But ultimately, I'm going to be giving you some of my impressions on the game, some of the things the game does right, game does wrong, um, and, and everything in between. So let's get started with what the game's all about, how it works, and how a MOBA in general breaks down. So when you queue for a game, you get put on one of two teams, and each team has five players. Now at the very start of the match, you get to pick what champion or what hero, or in this case, what god you want to play. Now once you're in the game, you start out at your base with your team, and in this area you can purchase items, and uh, we'll go over items a little bit later, but basically you have three lanes here, and creeps spawn on each of them and they meet in the middle, and if no one was around, they would cancel each other out for the most part and uh, it would be a stalemate. But your goal in this game is to push those back, to kill the creeps, kill any other gods that get in your way, uh, take down the towers. The towers give you global gold, meaning it gives everybody on your team some gold. And then you get to the phoenix towards the end, the phoenix being, uh, you know, your inhibitor or whatever MOBA you're playing is similar to that. It makes stronger creep spawn and then push the lane harder, giving you more pressure on the map, giving you more map control. And then once you break down the phoenix, you get to the minotaur and this is what you need to protect, otherwise you will lose or if you kill it, you will win. So, so that's just a really rough understanding of MOBAs in general. Um, you know, it's very similar to other MOBAs, there's not a lot of difference here, and you'll find that it's very easy to get into if you played anything else. That's really one of the things that surprised me was how easy this game is to get into. As someone who played League for, uh, you know, roughly six to six months to a year, somewhere in there. So jumping into this game, I really understood, you know, all the core mechanics you need to, and uh, it wasn't uncomfortable at all. So let's talk about the third person camera. Now, initially, I thought, you know, this would change the game entirely. It would feel like a different different game. You know, you'd be playing something entirely different. It's not really the case, but it does add some different aspects to the game that you might not expect. One of them being that because you have to aim everything, at least auto attacks for the most part, skills are a little different, but auto attacks you kind of have to predict because they have a projectile time. And so things like latency come into play, things like Collision play a big part in this. Tanks being up front will soak up all the auto attack damage from things like your, you know, your carry. In this game, they call them assassins. But the fact that it's third person and you're shooting projectiles plays a really big part in how you're doing damage. During the laning phase, you might be really close to, to killing someone, but like a creep gets in the way and you can't like finish him off in time, and then his skill comes back up and he's able to crowd control you and run away. So. You know, that line of sight really matters, and predicting where they're going to move also plays a big role. And then on top of that, it also limits your vision a lot. You can't see anything behind you or to the sides of you. So things like ganking are much scarier, in my opinion. Um, you know, you do have a mini-map that gives you some vision, but if you have zero vision on that person, you're not going to see them coming from behind you. And another point there is there's no fog of war. It's all about what you can see. If someone's really far away in lane and, uh, you know, it's just a straight shot to them, you can see them even though you might be, you know, insanely far away. In other games, that would be fog of war. You can see them. But here, there's, not, there's none of that. So there's a little difference there. Now I want to talk about the controls a little bit. Because you don't have a mouse cursor, um, you know, it's stuck to your aiming reticule until you press spacebar and then you get one. It's a little awkward to navigate like uh, pinging the minimap. So you have to press space and then drag your mouse up to it and then ping it. So, um, you know, it's a little clunky on that regard, but they've added some voice commands and things like that, um, that, you know, once you learn the hotkeys for them and uh, get used to that and get used to hearing it, it's gonna become a lot more comfortable now one of the first things you'll notice when you get in the game 
is how your character movement changes when you strafe and backpedal. So going forward, you're full speed, but whenever you strafe, it slows you down quite a bit. It's a really smart design choice, but it can feel really awkward at first and, and not comfortable. And once you get in and play with it, you'll realize why they did it. Um, because you are aiming projectiles and uh, you know auto attacks, things like that, they didn't want people moving around at light speed, just avoiding all of that damage, you know, strafing side to side while still able to do damage. If you're running away, you have to turn around and run. You can't just backpedal and uh, get away with that. So yes, it is uncomfortable at first, but once you get used to it, you realize it's, it's a smart design choice. Now getting on to the items, the items are very, very simplified compared to other MOBAs in the fact that there's no recipes and uh, how it works is you buy the level one or the stage one version of an item. You can level it up once and then you can level it up a third time and you get a passive or an extra bonus on top of those stats that you're getting. So for example, there's something very similar to Banshee's Veil that's in League of Legends. Um, just in terms of that, you know, absorb one magical effect. At stage one of this item, you don't get that. You just get some simple resists and uh, I believe some health. I can't recall exactly, but then you level it up to stage two, you get more of those stats, and then stage three, you get more of those stats again, but you also get the Banshee Veil effect. There are also a lot of items in this game that have stacks on them, so, uh, you know, you would get these items early on so you can start working those stacks up, and there seems to be one of these items per roll in the game, so, you know, your 80 damage stacks with your lifesteal, your defensive stacks and so on and so on. So every time you last hit a creep you get one stack and these don't you know diminish if you die or anything like that. Now I want to go over the visual style in this game, the graphics. So for me personally when I first got into this game it did not impress me in the fact that yes stuff has nice models, stuff has some nice animations, there are some interesting animations in the game I think uh, overall, they're about average or above average, so that's good. But the textures and the environment are two things that just really need a lot of work. Specifically, the environment is just really bad. Uh, you know, looking at the trees, looking at the shrubbery, going into the jungle, um, it's just very simple and not very interesting. And in fact, navigating the jungle in general feels very simple. It's just very narrow paths everywhere you go. Never does it open up into areas other than, you know, when you get to like specific mob spawns. But overall, it's just a series of very narrow corridors where a lot of skills become much stronger in because you're in this small area and you can't move side to side very much. Um, now, talking about the gods themselves, in my opinion, they don't really work well together. Um, I feel like there's not clear art direction in this game. It doesn't feel like all of these gods are sort of in this fantasy or this made up world where they all work together. Uh, they're they're kind of just really random. And maybe if the textures had some sort of art direction or I don't know, it, it, it just all feels very early on in development and of course this game is in beta and these things could all change and of course they will over the life of the game but I just really hope going forward with this game that they pick an art style with it or come up with a way to make the the textures just feel more like they belong in this world and like everything belongs together. Now apart from the art style of the graphics in the engine itself, the UI is another area where it really makes the game look worse than it is. This is something that before the game comes out they're going to have to um, redevelop for a lot of reasons. First off, controlling it, a little clunky, especially in the menus. The menus of this game are just terrible. Um, and if you've played Tribes, they're very similar. In fact, they're exactly the same. I found it's very tedious to play with other people. Um, you know, if you want to play in a party, you have to first invite them to a party and you know you have to click like five different things to get there and then you invite them and then you queue up and after the game's done you have to redo it and keep doing it like it doesn't keep you in the party 
So the social aspect of the game is a little clunky with the friends list and things like that. But uh, you know, in the actual game, the UI works well. Some people might have a problem with the minimap being at the top right, and uh, you know, they might want it at the bottom left or bottom right. But for the most part, you're getting the information you need. I will say there were a few times where I wanted to hover over a buff or hover over a debuff and see what it was actually doing to me. But uh, there are no tooltips for things like that when you hold space and hover over them. So that's one thing I wish they could add, you know, to help newer players learn the game a bit. But yeah, I mean, just like the this Egyptian mythical gods UI just needs a lot of work. It needs more detail. It needs uh, just it just needs to look better, and hopefully they fix that before this game comes out. But my overall impressions of the game are. It's a very solid game, and I think a lot of people are going to have fun with it. A lot of people who maybe don't like the top-down MOBA games never got into them. You know, this might open up that genre for them, and they might find a lot of fun with this game style. You know, the leveling up your character, the ganking, the jungling, um, you know, the jungle buffs and all that stuff. Like, it might really open up MOBAs for them, and they might try other MOBAs like Dota 2. League of Legends or whatever comes out, you know, in the next couple years. And just having the game in third person view just makes the game feel a lot more skill based, but at the same time, it is more luck based as well. Because if you miss a shot that you needed to land um, because you predicted wrong and it screws you over in some way, that can kind of feel a little cheap. But I think as you play this game more and more, You'll get used to stuff like that and uh, you know maybe it won't happen as much. But like I said, it's so easy to get into. There's not a lot of complication with the items or with the gods themselves. Um, you know, you can pick up a, a, a god and, and really learn it in one playthrough. It doesn't have that wall that I hit with Dota where um, there's just so much to learn in the game. Here, it's much more simplified and maybe as you play this game a lot more, maybe you'll want that deep deep gameplay that the other uh, like Dota specifically has but uh, you know it, it, it's a lot of fun just to get in and play with your friends like it what's what's really stopping you it's gonna be free to play and uh, I'll also touch on that a little bit being free to play it does have a business model associated with it similar to League of Legends your account does level up each time you uh, finish a game you get XP it goes towards your overall account level. It doesn't have the runes or, uh, you know, masteries that League of Legends has. In fact, I don't exactly know why you level up. I haven't looked into it. Other than you get like a huge bonus every time you level up um, to put towards another god. So that's one of the things I, I wish these MOBAs would stay away from. You know, on one level, getting some, some type of currency to buy stuff is a carrot on the stick and it does motivate you to keep playing however i feel like it puts you at a real disadvantage when you're just starting out and other people have access to you know all the gods and all that or, or friends you're playing with have access to it um so i i really like the dota model of we're gonna give everyone every hero and then how we're gonna make money is just off of cosmetic items like i really wish more MOBAs would go that way, but you know, it's really just personal preference and how the company wants to deal with their game. In Smite, there are skins, you can buy skins, um, similar to League of Legends in that regard. It's not like Dota where you're buying like items and building up, you know, gear or something like that. You know, not really impressed with the skins yet in this game, but obviously it's in beta and, and we'll see a lot more of that later. So I mean, all in all, I, I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's a very solid game. I think, you know, it's worth checking out for sure, especially if you enjoy MOBAs or if you've never tried one before. I put some beta keys for you guys in the description box so you guys can check this game out for free. Um, and all I ask is if you use these that you go into your account and post the beta keys that you get for other people to try so you can give back in that way. If you wanna keep one for a friend or something, Totally cool, you know, this is all, of course, optional. But yeah, give it a shot, guys. Let me know what you think about it. If you guys like this format for first looks, let me know. You know, I'm kind of working out all the kinks, and uh, maybe I'll check out some other games. But for now, this is going to do it for me, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.